Hey everyone, it's Jordan here, back again with this week's Switch physical releases. We're in the fourth and final week of July, the 25th until the 29th. Now it's a huge week and I'm not showing my face today because uh, I'm having some like technical issues. Uh, but yeah, probably be back next week. But anyways, this week, you ain't ready, your wallet ain't ready, and sure as hell your backlog is going to be begging for mercy. But before we jump in, go check out a bit more Jordan. Yesterday I premiered a retrospective on one of my favourite games of all time, Alundra. And yeah, go watch that, it was actually quite disheartening. It got a lot of dislikes for some reason and it's kind of performing terribly, kind of a waste of 40 hours work of my life, even though I think it's pretty decent. Uh, but yeah, it's making me second guess this whole YouTube thing and it's... Uh, yeah, it put me in quite a sad mood yesterday, but yeah, apologies, let's get on with this week's episode. It's a wallet buster, and let's start with the most essential of them all. BB Untina! New Adventures with Horses is the ultimate horse riding experience that you'll have this week. No other game this week offers brushing horses, kicking them in the ribs, and making them jump over ineffective fencing. I mean, you can just walk around those fences, what is the point? Where's the spike pit on the other side? I think this is the third or fourth game of the Bibi und Tina franchise on the Switch, or maybe just the old reprinted one. I can't be bothered to look. Digimon Survive is the best Digimon game available this week. After countless delays and speculation it may have been cancelled, we finally get a look at the latest monster raising game from Bandai. Maybe one could say it survived. This has been touted as a visual novel crossed with strategy RPG, which sounds great to me. Hopefully both parts are equally fleshed out, and given the attention that they deserve, we'll have to see. I really hope this does well, since it probably cost Bandai a lot of resources to keep development going on so damn long. Unless it was like one bloke in the stationary cupboard finishing it off, which I doubt, because no one's good enough for the glory of a stationary cupboard. That's the dream. And our executive producers, Robotech, Jennifer M, Alexander Kato, Issa, and Jonathan Rumor have chosen this as their pick of the week. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is a JRPG, apparently, I don't know, I've never heard of it, some indie developer. Oh my god, yes, for some, this is the biggest game of the year, no damn question about it. Xenoblade Chronicles 1 is one of my favorite JRPGs of all time. Uh, I didn't put anywhere near enough time into 2, and I'm not sure if I have the 100 hours to spare before this one releases to catch up. But anyways, this looks incredible. A huge, vast world, endless amounts of content, an in-depth battle system. Monolith Soft are incredible developers. I'm a big fan of their work, managing to create huge worlds in seemingly record time and beyond what you'd think possible for the system. 12 years ago when the original game released, I'd have never thought there'd have been five Xenoblade games, four of which were on the Switch. Although, come on, it's time to bring Xenoblade X to the Switch. It's the best Wii U game. And our executive producers, Elisa, Thorn Metal Luna, Dane Wilkinson, Precision Play, God of Resin, Raven Knight, Parsnip Coffee, and Jcross7776 have chosen this as their pick of the week. Squish is releasing in North America this week, I have to say. Poor Squish, they couldn't have picked a worse time to release this game. I mean, releasing the same week as BB Untina, what are they thinking? Plus it's called Squish. Squish between the releases of Xenoblade and Digimon, you poor sucker! Seems to be a unique party brawler that kinda looks like Tetris if it was a horror game. The blocks are falling down to crush you, and you need to avoid them, all the while pushing blocks sideways to squash your rivals. If only I could do that to my real rivals in life. Last time I tried, there was a court case involved. But nonetheless, last piece of goo standing wins. It seems to be positively received on Steam, although most reviewers played it for like an hour and they said it's so addictive, so yeah, I don't get that. Its longevity is unknown at this point. Has some funky music though. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge is releasing at retail in Europe this week. Remember, this is being handled by Limited Run Games in North America, and their pre-order window is just about ending. So not sure when they are sending those out. I heard they will have the standard editions out earlier than normal, but you'll be waiting a while for those collector's editions. Anyways, this was a very well-received brawler starring the famous Warrior Turtles, which I'm sure was a part of many a childhood. I think Dot .emu and Tribute Games knocked this out of the park. There's also a signature edition of the game if you want that one. And although I did have a few hand-me-down toys from my cousins, I wasn't a huge Turtle fan as a kid because, well, I was too busy playing video games and watching cartoons. But hey, they like pizza, and I respect that. It also has some positive representation of rats. Rats can be really cute. And our executive producer, Punky Dooster, and Grant Sir have chosen this as their pick of the week. 
All right, the Lil Prince. Demonica Everlasting Night is VGNY Soft's latest Switch release, coming in both a Standard Edition as well as an Elite Edition, which has some nice, shiny metallic cover art. This is a Symphony of the Night wannabe, perhaps a little rough around the edges. Yeah, it receives somewhat mixed reception on Steam, but if you're looking for some action exploration game with RPG progression, it could be a decent one. What's kind of unique about it is that it seems to be entirely brawler based. Yeah, the protagonist here answers demons with her fists. My kind of lady. If you're outside the US, you can order from Video Games Plus as VGNY only shipped to North America. Doom Eternal is almost a minor miracle. Yes, limited run games are coming good with the one physical literally everyone was asking for. Apparently it was too big for cartridge sizes, but not anymore. Now that money is wafting in their faces, funny what a bit of green can do. Anyways, I'm really happy that Doom Slayer's latest release is getting a proper physical. There's a standard edition as well as a nauseous amount of bigger editions. There's a Steenbock edition, there's a special edition as well as an ultimate edition for a scant 175 bucks yes they know they got a game to milk plus plenty of other merch to squeeze you with whatever it's nice it's happening although it is worth noting that there is no dlc on the cartridge plus it's not the full up-to-date version i think it's missing a couple of patches but apparently it is still perfectly playable with the versions on the cartridge. At least that's what Limited Run's PR says. It is what it is. And our executive producer, Viz, has chosen this as his pick of the week. All right, the imports. Remember, guys, if anything takes your fancy and you'd like to import it for yourself, then please consider using the links below in the description and the pinned comment. If you click those links and buy something, it helps support me and this series ever so much. You guys are wonderful, and I always thank you from the bottom of my heart. My heart is completely empty, so it's very easy to do that, I think. Plus, in return, if you click our links, you can get a very nice 5% of any physical item from Play Asia if you use our current discount code STEENBUCK. Yes, my favorite autocorrect STEENBUCK. Just remember to click our links first. That's how to really support us. And by the way, remember, until August 14th, Play Asia have lowered the free shipping threshold down to 50 bucks. So you only got to pay 50 bucks and you get free airmail shipping. It's wonderful. Make the most of it. This week's big import is Komajo Remelia Scarlet Symphony. I butchered that entirely, but I'm running with it. It's definitely showing up the wannabe symphony of the night we've already looked at. This may have an unmanageable name, but it's definitely going to be playing really well. I'll be telling you my full thoughts later this week, so I hope you'll be there to watch it. This is a HD remaster of sorts of a game that was never originally in English. It's part of the Toho Project series, so expect some bullet hell type boss battles after platforming and exploring the gothic environments. It looks really nice and is one of my most anticipated titles this year. I played games such as Overlord Escape from Nazarick and Record of Lord of War, and this looks more like the same awesomeness. I heard this one is pretty short though, so do keep that in mind. There is a standard edition and a collector's edition, but that seems to have sold out by its first shipment. Anyways, it has English, as I've said, and I hope you enjoy my review later this week. Uh, executive producers V and Instacritic have chosen this as their pick of the week. Azure Striker Gun Vault 3 is another big import, although perhaps slightly less important as in the previous one. This was put up for pre-order by Limited Room Games in North America a few months back, but if you missed out on that, then perhaps check out this Japanese or Asian release, which they both do have English. This is a side-scrolling action game, often considered to be the true successor to Mega Man. I've only ever played the Gun Vault Chronicles spin-offs, but I know these are very highly regarded, and there's no doubt in my mind this one will be too. And our executive producers Boombox and Cartoon Soren have chosen this as their pick of the week. Dungeon Munchies is a game I've mentioned countless times before since it was announced like a year ago, but the Japanese physical release is finally here alongside a newly announced Asian release, both of which have English and there's no word of a Western physical at this time. This is a weird looking side scrolling game where you fight monsters and then cook them to gain new abilities and such. It received average reviews for its digital release, but I'm open minded about it. Could be decent, could be middling, but I know it's going to be one of the more obscure imports out there. And a quick mention to the Hong Kong Massacre, which already has an Asian release, but its Japanese release is this week. That comes with English too. It's a fun, top-down, balls-to-the-wall action game. And if you need some hotline Miami-type gameplay in your life, then this is the one to go for. Our executive producers Kadacha and Brent McLean have chosen this as their pick of the week. 
There's also a bunch of other games coming out in Japan, most of them don't have English, or they've already released in the West and are getting a belated Japanese release not worth talking too much about. Here they are, read them if you can. Alright, the community spotlight, but before we get on to you lot, I want to show something that I recently got in, Metal Max Xeno Reborn. And not only that, but a collector's edition that's available from funstock.co.uk, of which only 500 were made for each of the North American and European regions respectively. Of course, you get the game which comes outside of the collector's box, which is interesting. The big collector's box is very sturdy, modelled after a big old tomb, it looks quite good, pretty fun with some nice artwork on the front. Inside, well, it's perhaps bigger than it needed to be as there's plenty of room. You get a case that has three enamel pins designed to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the series. No, I had no idea it was going on that long either. You get four nice looking art cards and yeah, I think I'm framing that good old doggo. The game itself is an RPG set in a post-apocalyptic world. It's open world as you traverse the area on foot or in vehicles, you find other survivors to join your party and it's quite challenging. It's definitely B-movie schlock, don't expect a big budget JRPG here, it's very grounded in what it tries to do but these are usually my favourite type of games, yeah? You can grab the standard edition at retail pretty much anywhere but the collector's edition is only available on funstock.co.uk as far as I'm aware. They have both European and North American versions available. Go check it out! Alright, onto you lot! A big thank you to Psych Villain for the donation, very much appreciated. They got in these three releases. Morbid is a very underrated release. For some reason, it flew under the radar, perhaps because the physical release was only in Europe, but definitely don't sleep on it, it's a really decent game. Carlos Sato sent in this photo with a couple of games. Manifold Garden is a fascinating puzzle game released by I Am 8-Bit. Never released in Europe for some reason, but Japan did get a version. Executive producer is the critic sent in this photo showing off the Asian version of Hong Kong Massacre. Remember that's hitting Japanese stores this week. Either way, pretty much exactly the same. Crimson Cloud Kauri sent in this photo of three imports. I guess the free CD and art book ran out for Tasamachi. Never mind, still pretty nice chill game. Jokey Level sent in this bunch of imports. Only a small amount of judgment with Waifu Discovered 2. I mean, I've put you on a list of people to keep an eye on. James Blackwell got in the Bandai Store exclusive of the hack games that came with the CD, which of the, I think, five or six I've seen, all of them had broken or cracked CD cases. A bit of a shame, but not the end of the world. The CD still works. TC got in If My Heart Had Wings thanks to the recent restock over on Play Asia. I'd say that this is a perfect VN for summer, which totally coincidentally is a video topic I covered over on VN Paradise last week. Yorma sent in this picture with some top imports. Actually, just to keep you updated with Chrono Cross, it's officially become our most popular import of all time. It just scraped past Legend of Mana, an equally worthy import. Port. Executive producer Vei, our man in Japan had a quiet week picking up Live Alive. I've seen lots and lots of positivity about this one and rightly so. Buy it, buy it now. Ryan S showed off the premium edition games, their entire catalogue of releases. I still maintain that Phenotopia is the best of the lot of them. Stephen Domit listened to my wise words about this becoming a bit of a collector's piece, especially since its digital release is currently being eradicated from existence. Executive producer Cartoon Storm also got in hack. You get three JRPGs in one package alongside a brand new episode to finish off this sub-series. I do wonder if we'll get the original hack games, I don't know. Why did they go straight to this one? Executive producer Thorn Metal Luna showed off this bunch of games. Connect Tank is a bit of an obscure one. It just sort of released without any fanfare whatsoever in North America. Dame Fortuna sent in the Treasure Box edition of Three Hopes, which I think has English and Play Asia still have some copies left, weirdly. Usually they sell out instantly. Executive producer Jennifer M sent in these games, picking up Pokemon Snap. I actually recently introduced my daughter to video games. I thought 4 was a, it was a fair starting age. We played Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, and now she's obsessed with Pokemon. Absolutely adorable, where literally anything we see is now a Pokemon, and she wants me to help her catch it, and then she decides what type it is. Usually it's every single type under the sun. It's so nice to see her imagination, you know, as we have like pretend Pokemon battles. I even showed her the OG Pokemon Snap on the Switch online, and she was just bewildered by all of that. Alright, our executive producer got a resonance in this photo of some nice imports. Thanks for supporting us as per usual. Massively appreciate it. They got in the Japanese version of Liberated, which has some very cool and different artwork to the Western release. 
Cereal Soup sent in this photo. They got in Scourge Bringer thanks to the recent restocks. It may be debatable, but in terms of like pure gameplay, it's probably Play Asia's best exclusive. There's not too many boobs, but you know, the pure action gameplay is probably the top of the top. Maybe. Executive producer Boombox finally got in this massive edition of Castlevania, which I'm pretty sure has been about two years in the making. He said you can make it light up and play music without even opening it. That's pretty cool. All right, let's have a roundup. Visipan. JP. Choco Loco James. Metric Magic. The Esoteric Camel McLaren Ying Ilundara Ashura G Marty Ma Lento Max One Two One Six Vast Neon Needless Dragon Park Ranger Invasorzim Craid Alright, you can send me your pictures on Twitter at so what about game. You can DM me or tag me in a post and use the hashtag let's get physical. Email address switchwatchspotlight gmail.com and uh, we have a Discord where you can send your pictures there in the submission section. The Discord server link is in the description. Please only send me one picture per week. All right, I hope you enjoyed this uh, Let's Get Physical episode. Sorry you didn't see my face. Not that my face is very important, you know. There is a health warning on my face, so don't want to show it too much. Uh, yeah, thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, J Crowd, 7776, Elisa, Punky Dooster, Cartoon Soren, Robotech, Z, Raven Knight, Thorn and Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Isa, V, Mental Traveler, Grant Cert, Viz, Jennifer M, Instacritic, Precision Plague, and Kadacha. Thank you for your support. Plus you. Yeah, you're watching right now. If you watch all the way through, what a legend you are. You help us grow. If you did watch all the way through, please leave me a horse emoji or a fence emoji. I don't know. A horse jumping over a fence. Does a fence emoji exist? Probably not. All right, go check out my other channel, A Bit More Jordan for A Lot More Me. I recently showed the Alundra video, which I think is pretty good. Although, you know, some, I think Zelda fans didn't appreciate that I compared it to Zelda Shock Horror. It's great. Both are great. Zelda's amazing. Alundra is amazing. They're equally amazing, but they're different. Alundra's better in some regards. Zelda's better in some regards. Okay, chill out. Please like the video, okay? Seeing like 10% dislikes, that didn't, that didn't like a... Uh, Fill me with much joy. That's like the lowest I've ever had. Anyways, uh, yeah, go check that out. And check out VM Paradise. I'm sure there's lots of shit going on over on there. Yeah, there's always stuff going on. And uh, yeah, bargains. We had double bargains last week. Go watch them. Oh, yeah.